Yes, please. Time is yours. Gracia, Janati, and Nadia too. You can start your yes. presentation from now. All right, sir. Thank you for the time. Uh, let me introduce my group. We are group three. Gracia, Janati, and Nadia Tul Khaira Huda will present today's topic, Immune Response to SARS-CoV-2 and Mechanism of Immunopathological Change in COVID-19. The article aims to comprehensively review the current knowledge on the immunological change observed in COVID-19 infection. So as we know, COVID-19 is an infectious uh, disease that caused by the recently found virus known as SARS-CoV-2. And before the outbreak originated in Wuhan, there was no information about this virus previously. Let's start with the introduction. So coronavirus are named for their large spike, uh, this one the orange uh, colors, uh, despite projecting from their envelope that giving the virus uh, a crown-like shape about 100 nanometer. And the envelope, this gray one, is uh, consists of a lipid layer that uh, derived from the cell membrane. And there are seven types of coronavirus uh, that divide into four low pathogenic and uh, three types in high pathogenic. Um, low pathogenic occurs um, mild disease and are globally endemic. Meanwhile, the high pathogenic occurs outbreak. Uh, since it's a first report in December 2019, uh, there are three central variants of current virus that uh, have been in amino acid sequence, and it is have been identified that namely A, B, and C, uh, uh, A, B, and C of uh, different in the variant of the virus. Uh, the ancestor type A and the mutate one, the C type, found in significant proportion outside the East Asia, mainly in Europe and in United States. Meanwhile, the B type, which has mutated and spread in the most common type in East Asia. And this figure shows us the iceberg of COVID-19 pandemic. About 20% of the patient, the currently diagnosed patient appear with a severe case, uh, but uh, overall a death rate about uh, 6%. And it is currently increasing worldwide and depend on the quality of healthcare service and the hospital capacity. However, there are also a high number of unprompt asymptomatic uh, individuals that are in the bottom of the iceberg with COVID-like symptoms and without any diagnosis, test and hospital admission. This paper uh, will explain us how virus bending occurs and the international internalization of the epithelial cells and the replication of uh, the viral. Uh, let's see for the first step. It is uh, the process of binding and viral entry via membrane. Um, SARS-CoV-2 will use the receptor ACE2 or angiotensin converting enzyme 2 and TMPRSS2 as the receptor. And the SARS-CoV-2 SARS will bind into these two receptors and will enter the cytoplasm. Uh, 
the viral release their viral genome and the replication will happen with the RNA genome on uh, negative strand RNA and negative strand RNA will serve as the template for full length of genomic RNA and the trend the replication occurs uh, with uh, several genomic, how to say this one, uh, several genomic, um, molecules. And after the replication uh, finish, uh, it will continue with translation and after translation, the structural proteins will be localized to the Golgi intracellular membrane. Uh, it is called ERGIC or endoplasmic reticulum Golgi intermediate compartment. And in this, uh, in this part, it is called the site budding. After the after the structural proteins uh, localized in the ERGIC, the new variants that are contains full genome RNA released from the cell, and it is the viral cycles of COVID two, COVID nineteen. Sorry. So uh, now we are looking for strain immunity and innate immune response. Um, for innate immune response, based on this paper, there is limited knowledge on the innate immune response uh, other than elevated levels of acute phase reactants and the cytokine storms. So in these figures, uh, this figure shows us immunologic changes and uh, related to COVID-19 that will be explained later uh, in this presentation. Ah, sorry. Uh, for in in that immune response, it is uh, relates to in uh, inflammasome activation in macrophages, epithelial cell, and uh, endothelial cells that release pro-inflammatory cytokines and contribute to the pathogenic inflammation that responsible for the severity of symptoms. Uh, and it is uh, related to activate of NF XB pathway and a high number of pro-inflammatory cytokines with a major role in initiating virus in this inflammation. Next, TNB cell, TNB cells response. Uh, this is the scam of acute infection and the vaccine that are expected to develop same type of an immune response with T and B cell immunity and development of virus specific neutralizing antibodies. For a short time, the whole virus and viral particles are will recognize by professional antigen presenting uh, it is dendritic cells uh, will shown in the figure after this one. Uh, this figure shows us the immune response to coronavirus and also other respiratory viruses. After the epithelium infected uh, by the virus, the replicating virus can cause a cell disease uh, and direct, directly will damage the epithelium. And the epithelium with the MHC 
one. It is the viral peptides uh, will be present through the MHC1 and what to say? It will be recognized with CD8 T cells. Yeah, MHC1 uh, recognized uh, into the CD8 T, T cells. And after, after, after recognize uh, the CD8 T cell will expand, uh, one ex will, uh, yeah, will become activated and start to divide upon our expansion mm -hmm. and will develop virus specific effector in the memory T cells. And the epithelium present various antigens to CD8 T cells with their perforin granzymes. CD8 T cells and natural killers will show cytotoxicity to virus infected and will induce the apoptosis and subepithelial. So so epithelial dendritic cells or DC, yeah, DC will recognize the virus antigens and will present them to CD4 T cells. And uh, the CD4 T cells will induce the differentiation of uh, these T cells toward uh, memory TH1, uh, TH17, uh, and memory T. Follicle, follicular helper. The follicle, follicular helper will help B cells to develop into uh, plasma cells and promotes the production of ADM, ADG, and also ADA. Uh, it is the isotype virus specific or uh, antibodies. And the tissue macrophages uh, and DC will also prevent the viral antigens to CD4, uh, CD4 T cells. Yeah. What about the garenzymes? Does function uh, molecular cells? NK. <laughs> Yeah, don't forget to explain about it. The, the left side, you see that natural killer cells also uh, exert a response. Yes. The natural killer cells will show cytotoxicity to virus uh, infected epithelial here and will in this apo apoptosis. By producing what? Perforin granzymes. Oh yeah, perforin granzymes. Two, two, two kind of substance, right? Perforin and granzymes. Both uh, the substance related by natural killer cell that uh, will induce the apoptosis of the infected tissue, infected cells. Uh. And also don't forget that actually natural killer cell response uh, due to the release of interferons. So interferons released by the infected cells and also released by dendritic cells. So dendritic cell or DC also produces interference and uh, infected cells also uh, release interference. And because the signal from the interference itself, then it will activate natural killer cell to produce perforin and granzymes. And therefore perforin and granzymes lead to the apoptosis of such of the cells. Uh, all right, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, now the presentation will be continued by my friend. Okay, thank you, Grace, and thank you, sir. Uh, maybe I miss uh, many information or many process, but I will to try explain you about the information and about the process. Uh, this is a part of my presentation today. 
I want to tell about the immunological change. The first is about the lymphopenia in the T cell. We know a uh, lymphopenia is a condition with a low or decreased lymphocyte, uh, T lymphocyte or uh, T cell level. We know the uh, T, T cell or T lymphocyte have a function in the immune system. Uh, in the COVID-19, uh, the lymphopenia uh, serves like a biomarker and a possible target for the intervention to minimize the risk of the severe, severe disease. Uh, so uh, for the journal, uh, I got the in we got the information. In the lymphopenia condition, uh, we know lymphocytes have uh, three uh, types, uh, the cell T regulator, T cell helper, and T cell cytotoxic. In the lymphopenia condition in the COVID-19, the cell T regulator uh, become low and the T cell helper become low too and the T cell cytotoxic uh, become activated. Next slide. Okay, uh, from the last explanation about the lymphocyte, uh, this is uh, there is a table. The table uh, tell, uh, tell us about the, there are two time points after a symptom onset uh, in the 10 until 12 days and 17 until 90 days, 19 days. From the table, we know uh, the patient with the more than 20% lymphocyte are accepted uh, as being in recovery. And the patient, the patient with a lymphocyte person between a five hundred five percent and twenty percent are still in an at risk group, are still ill, and uh, while the patient with the lymphocyte person less than five percent five percent are critically, or uh, ill, critically ill. Uh, so um, in this case, uh, the patient. Uh, have a high mortality rate. Uh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this framework or table um, show us about there are a distinct response to the high and low dose virus exposure and infection. Uh, the, the, the low infection may lead to a prolate uh, effector T and B cell respond uh, and neutra neutralizing antibodies and rapid viral coherence. And about the high dose exposure uh, may cause severe disease and dilated viral clearance. Uh, this may be uh, this may be due to the lymphopenia leading to in equivalent T and B cell immunity. Subsequently, the cytokine storms and inflammation in the tissue cell. The high dose, uh, ex the high dose exposure may occur in the healthcare workers and the individuals who are exposed to currently sick or asymptomatic virus spreading families members who get the COVID-19 in the, their family. Uh, next slide. Okay, from the journal, the mechanism by uh, the, the mechanism by which there is a significant lymphocyte reduction in the surface cases remain unclear. The type of lymphocyte death should be extensively studied in a COVID-19. It may represent a therapeutic mod modality for self cases if it is mechanism are better uh, we understood. The apoptosis process of lymphocytes can be regulated in the cell by the exogenous and or intrinsic factors and can be modulated with the role of pro and anti-apoptosic molecules. Next slide. Okay, now we move to the uh, uh, regulator uh, T cell or TREC cell. The TREC cell, the function is to suppress excessive immune response uh, and against the response of B cells and T cells to other antigens. And the second to prevent and control the de development of the autoimmune and allergic disease. 
uh, in the COVID-19 from this journal about the tract cells, the tract cells can, li- can limit pulmonary, pulmonary immunopathology. Uh, from the journal, the molecular mechanism involved in, regula- in regulating uh, use a fog head box P3 or fox P3 expression. But the antigen specific response of the tract cell in the COVID-19 remain unclear from this journal and I still didn't get uh, any information from the other source and the further studies are needed to the exploit the applicability in the cl- clinical setting uh, again. Next. And we move to the immunological change about the eosinophil. Uh, in the eosinophil, we know uh, the condition LC eosinopenia. Eosinopenia or low eosinophil are a decrease is uh, in the eosinophil. Uh, uh, the eosinophil is a type of white blood uh, cell and the function to fight various kind of the infection in the body. And when our body have a low eosinophil, uh, they can impact to our immune system. Uh, the, our immune system function will be impaired. From the picture in the right, uh, maybe we can look. Uh, normal people have uh, until 350 eosinophil cell uh, per microliter uh, of blood, but uh, in the patient COVID, they have because uh, uh, they have um, eosinophilia condition uh, because the eosinophil below normal range uh, until uh, one below a uh, one person. Uh, next. Uh, uh, from uh, from the la, la, before explanation, we know the lymphopenia and eosinophilia have uh, correctly positive uh, co- correctly positive. Mm, I mean, decreased blood from the eosinophil counts cor- correlated uh, positive with the lymphocyte counts. Uh, so how about the uh, mechanism of uh, eosinophil eosinophil Eosinopenia. The mechanism in the in the eosinopenia is not described uh, in detail too, but from the journal, I have uh, two information about why uh, the the patient COVID nineteen get the eosinopenia condition. The first is about the high migration of eosinophils from peripheral blood to the infected organs, or can be caused by a persistent and strong type 1 response against a type 2 response. Uh, but I uh, I still don't have uh, information to about the type 1 response and the type 2 response for the eosinopenia in the COVID-19. And the second mechanism about the presence of inhibition of the eosinophils out of the spinal cords. Uh, next. Uh, okay, uh, we move to the uh, cytotoxic CD8 T cell response. Uh, cytotoxic T cell, uh, also known as TC, cytotoxic T lymphocyte or CTL, or T killer cell, or cytolytic T cell, or CD8 uh, plus T cell, or killer T cell. And the process uh, already. Uh, already discussed, uh, already explanation from Grace, and the cytotoxic CDT cell response is a T lymphocyte or a type of white blood that uh, kills cancer cells and the cells that are infected, uh, particularly with the virus. Mm. Uh, and next, uh, we know the CT T cell is a cytotoxic T cell uh, form. Uh, and then uh, from the journal, uh, this cell influenced by the lymphopenia. Mm, like my explanation before, the T cell cytotoxic were decreased in the event of uh, lymphopenia. Uh, in this uh, picture, same with the, uh, same with uh, explanation by Gracia, but I focus to the CD8 uh, plus T cell. Um, 
the epithelium is infected with the SARS-CoV-2 and then the cell lysis and direct damage to the epithelium. Uh, and the epithelium present virus antigens uh, to the CT, CD8 plus T cell uh, and, and they um, give a uh, active and activate the perforin and granzomyces. Um, perforin and granzomyces synergies to mediate uh, apoptosis in the cell target, or um, they can cause the apoptosis or cell death in the target cell or infected cell. Uh, next. Uh, and about the virus specific antibody response. Mm. Similar to many other uh, viral diseases, uh, an increase in the virus specific EGM in the acute phase, uh, followed by an increase in the virus specific EGG. Mm. And it has been observed in the course of the COVID-19, we can look the figure uh, six in the right. From the figure, uh, EGG and the EGM specific virus reach to peak level uh, in the, if uh, we count to in the, the days is uh, 17 until uh, 19 days and 20 until 22 days after a symptom onset respectively, uh, like my table before and how about the IG, e, immun, immunoglobin A the immunoglobin A from the journal tell, tell us about the development of the muscle immunity IgA may be important for preventing sars covid infection um, and uh, from the course we can look when the sars covid uh, Self COVID reached the peak. The EGA, EGM, and EGG uh, uh, increased too in the in the patient COVID nineteen. And next, the presentation may continue with my friend uh, Nadia. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you, Janati uh, and Sir. Now I'd like to explain about the acute uh, fast reactant. This is the potential diagnostic marker and predictor of the disease outcome in human and animal. Infectious and non-infectious again can induce an inflammatory response where the acute fase protein increase and viral in the host defense the to against the infection. Uh, and then in the SARS patient, uh, they are elevated C-reactive protein or CRP and alanine transaminase or ALT and lactate dehydrogenase, LDH and the creatine, creatine kinase levels. Uh, acute fase reactant in COVID-19 correlates high level increased disease uh, severity and death. From the, from the diagram, we can see uh, the diagnosed to 45 MERS and COVID infected patient uh they are uh, a little of them uh, had no pneumonia and some of them uh, had the infection with the pneumonia and uh, some of them uh, either had pneumonia and respiratory failure this is because of increase of c-reactive protein represent for pneumonia development and respiratory failure next uh, this is the table shown the change in acute fast reactant and serum biochemistry in COVID-19 patient. We can see uh, there are mo uh, much of uh, acute fast reactant and serum biochemistry that they are increased. Most of them are increased uh, except the albumin uh, from the SARS-CoV uh, patient. The albumin is decreased, but uh, but uh, the, the other acute fast reactant and serum is uh, increased. 
and further research, consensus, and standard approach are needed to identify which acute fast reactant are essential for early diagnosis, prediction, and follow-up of patient. Next. Uh, there are three stage clinical phase of COVID-19. In the first week, uh, there are not upper respiratory system disease and uh, it can be recovery. And if it's not, on the second week, uh, there are localized pneumonia and disseminated inflammation. Uh, and from one month, uh, if, they are, if uh, the patient is not uh, recovery, they will be shown the diagnosis like cytokine storm, sepsis, DIC, ARDS, and multi-organ failure, and uh, the secondary bacterial infection. Uh, most of COVID-19 patients recover with mild and moderate disease in one week, but some develop to severe pneumonia in the second week, followed by cytokine storm, ARDS, multi-organ failure, and disseminate in intravascular. Next. And then uh, this is about the cytokine storm. Cytokine storm. Cytokine storm is complex network of several molecular events unified by, by a clinical phenotype of systemic inflammation, multi-organ failure, and hyperferritinemia. Induced by activation large number of white blood cell and resident tissue cells, which release high amount of pro-inflammatory cytokine. And cytokine storm is common feature of several COVID-19 cases. Mortality in COVID-19 is due to virus activated the cytokine storm syndrome. From the picture, we can see uh, the cytokine storm syndrome is correlated into the coagulopathy and the ARDS that uh, the cytokine storm is uh, about the inflammation, the monocyte derived the macrophage and the neutrophils and it affects the immunoparalysis. And then uh, it correlates correlate into the coagulopathy about the endothelial infection and vascular damage and vasculitis. And both of them is correlate into the ARDS. Uh, the, uh, it's about the alveolar cell infection and damage of the cells and inflammation. The problems if the immune system is defeated by COVID-19 is uh, shown by the picture. And then uh, increase circulating cytokine visible with fever, then turn into tissue damaging storm that affecting affecting several patients. Next. Uh, and then uh, the next is acute respiratory distress syndrome in COVID-19 or ARDS. Uh, this is the acute inflammatory lung injury manifesting as acute hypoxemic respiratory failure. Uh, the ARDS develops in some critically ill patients with uh, 8 to 9 days after onset of the COVID-19. Common in older people with uh, comorbidities including the hypertension, diabetes, coronary artery disease, bronchitis, ischemic disease of uh, central nervous system, and Parkinson's di Parkinson disease. So uh, this is uh, diagnosed with uh, several uh, illness too. And the indication, patient with ARDS difficult to oxygenate as their lung filled with fluid and CFH. The CFH contributes to cytokine storm by increasing pro-inflammatory cytokine expression and paracellular permeability. Next. Uh, this is the photogenesis of severe COVID-19. Uh, if the In the picture, we can see if the SARS-CoV-2 uh, break out the tissue and go into the organ, uh, they will do the high level of viral replication. And uh, after two weeks, they will be uh, shown by the cytokine storm. This is the, this is the, the factor of the cytokine storm. And then they also show the ARDS, uh, high acute fast reactant, and call free hemoglobin or CFH. And they affect two into the lymphopenia and eosinopenia. And um, they will infect the endothelium. Several COVID 19 present with high viral load, cytokine storm, ARDS, cell free hemoglobin, high acute fast reactant, lymphopenia, eosinopenia, microinflammation endothelium and DIC. 
endothelial damage, cell free hemoglobin, cytokine storm, and lymphopenia show links to severe disease. Next. And then for the autopsy finding, this is the complication frequently observed in patients who died by COVID-19. Uh, they are sepsis, respiratory failure, ARDS, septic shock, acute cardiac injury, heart failure, coagulopathy, secondary infection, and kidney injury. The, uh, the autopsy feature is similar to SARS and MERS. And then the macroscopic feature have to observe in the chest area include the pleurisy, pericarditis, lung consolidation, and pulmonary edema. And then uh, the secondary infection may lead the purulent inflammation. Next. And for the conclusion, SARS-CoV-2 is associated with significant morbidity and mortality. And its disease, we call the COVID-19, is a zoonotic disease uh, already spread globally and it will be impossible to eradicate. So we have to live together with this uh, virus and we have to change our habit to uh, against the virus. And COVID-19 represent the clinical forms like asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe cases, and many more. Okay. I think that's all about the presentation. I go back to Gracia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nadia and Nana. Uh, this is the end of our presentation. Um, thank you for your attention, and let's begin the discussion. If uh, the another friend have a suggestion, comment, and question, the floor is yours. Okay, Gracia, would you mind to open the slide number six? So in the slide number yes, six, you show uh, how the, mechan the, the mechanisms, uh, how the uh, SARS-CoV-2 could infect the cells. So here, uh, there are two... Uh, kind of molecules involving in mediating the virus to be infected. There is a, a ACE2 or angiotensin converting enzyme 2 and also TMPRASS2. As we know this, of course, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 is the major one, but what is the functions of TMPRASS2 here? Whether it's also mediated like uh, acts as uh, the same way as a AC2 or uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 mediating it, or it will mediate it in different way? Uh, so, in my opinion, the TMPRSS2 as the host cell, sir. Host cell, what do you mean? Yeah, of course, a AC2 also and TMPRS2 also both are enzymes. And oh. angiotensin, uh, yes, angiotensin converting, converting enzymes too. That is enzyme. And TMPR is, is also, this is a uh, transmembrane protease serine 2. This is also enzyme. This is protease enzymes. Uh, so my, my, my point is what is the, the, the different uh, function of such, whether they, they have some functions, some mechanisms in mediating the source cop to infect the, 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 the cells, or they they differently uh, elicit the mechanism in mediating such a virus to be infected. Mm. Because the common is now right, uh, only ACE2 and gutansin converting enzymes too. So what about the TAPRS2, transmembrane protease serine type 2? This is also enzymes. And here, uh, this figure clearly shows that actually TMPRS, uh, TMPRS is also play a role, a key role in mediating such a virus to, to be able in uh, impacting the cells. Yes. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm not sure about the difference, sir. Mm -hmm. So what about others? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know too about uh, different about the AC2 and the TMPR SS2. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, sir. 
Okay, so both of these uh, enzymes are also expressed in, in, in the cells, including in the lungs and also in many types of the cells. But uh, angiotensin, uh, ACE2 or angiotensin converting enzyme 2 is the most uh, common one activity that's well expressed uh, abundantly in many, many uh, kind of mucosal tissue, including in our respiratory tract and also in our lungs. But TMP is too also express it there. And sometimes in certain conditions, like uh, actually the biological functions of this, this enzyme is uh, last to be understood scientifically. But the expression of such enzyme increase in, in cases like uh, in cancer, like in prostate cancer. So it is associated with the cancer actually. And therefore it is also, uh, you know, max of uh, some patient with cancers also to, uh, very prone to, uh, with I mean, exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 severity. So when they are infected with the SARS-CoV-2, the, the cancerous patients will also uh, be, you know, infected with a damage, with, with a severity damage in, in their body because also their body expresses TM barriers too as well. But in normal situations also, TM barriers too also mediated this. So to, two different function actually here. ACA2 uh, is a, function directly as a receptor for, for this virus. But TMPRS2 is like, uh, you know, priming, priming the, the, the spike protein, you know, the S protein or spike protein, make it priming before it, it could bind to AC2. Do you know kind of priming? Priming, it's my, make the, the, the spike protein to be easily uh, yes. combined with the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2. So by blocking the mm -hmm. 2 also, actually, it, it could be uh, slightly the, the binding between the spike protein with ACE2. So before the spike protein attached to ACE2 enzymes, it should be priming mm -hmm. uh, primed by the mp 2 firstly. And there, it's like the initiation or activations of uh, of, of a uh, spike protein to be able to bind to AC2. That's it. Uh, the, the priming meaning. So it is it is important actually. The TMPs to also play key roles in mediating the infections of the virus into our tissue. So by blocking both uh, angiotensin converting enzyme two or blocking TMPs two we also could prevent the infection of such a virus because this is the, me the, the mechanism how the virus could infect it, could infect the yeah. issue. Any other questions? That is my question. Okay, uh, any other question from other student? Hineen or from Janati or other? from Hanapi Wilco. Before I also uh, would like to ask another question. What about this one of, uh, you know, previously you show the graphs showing the imoglobulin dynamic, IgA, IgG and IgA. Would you mind to uh, move to the next slide showing such a graph? Because in response to the virus infections, our body then will produce the imoglobulin type, uh, I mean, globulin A, G, and A. Yeah, that's slide number 19. Nine. Yeah, 19. Yeah, they, this is. As you see here, that actually, uh, the first uh, response that our body will produce the I mean globulin, uh, uh, this is I mean globulin G, right? So, but the yellow one, yes, specific I mean globulin G. AM first, the, the, the first one AM, and then it will be followed it by I'm in global in A, and after what, uh, the latest one, I'm in global in G. So my point is how this, this concept is now applied to, uh, to, you know, make the diagnosis to justify whether uh, the, this, this person is infected positively with the SARS-CoV-2 or not. 
how the basic uh, understanding on such this dynamic of I mean globally applied in, in in developing of the like rapid test for this virus. Would you mind to explain it? As we know, there are two types of uh, diagnosis uh, procedures, right? Uh, like uh, using PCR, we directly detect the virus itself, the the RNA, the genetical matters of such a virus. So by by uh, amplifying such a virus uh, RNA, then we could identify whether this person is infected by directly detect the appearance of such a, a genetic material of the virus. But the second one is alternatively they detect the antibody, but how they which kind of antibody detected it and how they the, the, the basic foundations, I mean the foundation they develop such a rapid test, call it rapid test. So there are two types, right? PCR based test and also rapid test test based on antibody. So would you want to, to explain about uh, uh, about the uh, rapid test itself, not that's uh, detecting the with using PCR. It's very simple in, in explaining such a thing. But based on antibody, which kind of uh, what antibody they detect in rapid test? Oh, all right, sir. So as far as I know, yeah. the the serology test. Uh, it is designed to detect the antibodies, uh, IgG and IgM. Yeah, sure. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and then it is uh, related to the weeks of infection. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the incubation period of COVID, uh, the incubation is uh, five until uh, 10 days mm -hmm. so uh, a specific IgM will respond uh, as the earlier antibody response and it is start at uh, a peak uh, in seven days yeah in mm -hmm. this one so uh, in this uh, uh, based on the serology test it will detect the IgM in yeah. that time about, about less than 10 days, right? So rapid tests uh, only detect like a B positive in IgM only if you do you do, use the such a rapid test on on early period of infections like five days. Sometimes, like uh, less than five days, it couldn't be detected. Why? Because yes, the antibody itself IgM is produced after that day, like a week after infection. So before such a such a period, it will be like now negatively detected in rapid test. This is a kind of uh, the weak point of rapid test because we detect the antibody and sometimes, you know, it takes a time to produce IgM, right? Which yes. means you previously show the, the, the response, the previous slide, which you might to, to scroll it into the previous back. Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. So as as we see here, actually, in this uh, uh, picture, showing that actually, in order to produce the IgM, IgG, and IgA produced by uh, plasma, uh, I mean plasma cells derived from B cells, it takes a very long way, right? So the first, yes. the, yeah, in, in the first layer is should be CDH, T cells, and dendritic cells, and after what it will induce the CD4 T cells and T helper type one cells, and after what the T helpers type one will uh, present such information to B cells, and then B cells will will uh, transform to plasma cells. And then plasma itself will produce the I mean globulin and G and A. And therefore, this is like such a long step for a uh, plasma cell to be able to produce it, such a specific antibody. Therefore, it couldn't be directly produced. It, it takes a time, like more than five days, uh, that this process should be taken in order to produce the, the proper amount of IgM. 
and then ITA, and then ITG. So the largest one is ITG. So if we detect, detect that such a, the appearance of antibody in the earlier of infections, it should be negative. Why? Because it's probably still in in, in the first step, like uh, the response of the dendritic cells or the response of CD8 T cells first, but not yet for the plasma, plasma cell to produce such antibody. Okay. So it is clearly actually uh, by detecting such antibody, uh, there is uh, the weakness points <laughs> in, in that time because uh, it couldn't be precisely detected in all the day of infections. What about if, if uh, in infections which might to return back to the previous crop? I mean the next crop showing the dynamic of IgG and IgM. Yeah, this one. So you see here that actually the levels of I mean globulin G, the blue the blue line, spreads that uh, in long long period. So until like a month later, and recently uh, uh, I I read a publications, they mentioned that I mean globulin G actually could be sustained until six months post infections. So it's quite great information, uh, 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 you know, something that uh, very, very great news for us because uh, we could sustain our antibody. I mean, globally, this very specific one, the very strong one to fight the virus infections. As you see here, that actually IgM is not so strong in response, and also the response is delayed. And then it will be supported by IgG. So I'm global in G is the most important one, but we don't respond priming by IgM. There will be no uh, proper response in producing IgG. So it is important for IgGM. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm in global in M to firstly response and then follow it by IgG. So don't worry if someday you are uh, you know detected uh, positively <laughs> by rapid test, you are positive for IgG but negative or I oh, yeah. so sometime you know in our uh like uh yeah many people that don't know how the basic of such uh development of the rapid test they are very very worried because they are detected positive for the rapid test but in interpreting of such a rapid test result we should notice we should uh, uh notice what kind of antibody is positive for this person whether igm or only igg or botch igg and igms here, if you are infected, so uh, please focus on the red line. Uh, this is a pink line, right? Showing the, the appearance of the virus. So if you are positive with IgG, IgM, both are positive. And here, the situation is like less than two weeks, right? IgG positive yeah. because the numbers of IgG is also higher and IgM also positive uh, when you detect it in rapid test because the, the amounts of Ig, IgM also is still higher. So at, at this person that based on the rapid test, uh, he or C, for example, is positive for uh, rapid test IgG and IgM, it is dangerous for this person. Why? Because as you see in the pink line, it showed that actually in 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 his body in his body or her body the amount of virus is still higher, so she could be infective. She could infect us when we interact with her. But sometime in a very early period, when this person only positive for IgM, this is also showing the very uh, you know dangerous period because this is the earlier uh, infections. CC here. Sometimes it's only positive for IgM based on rapid test or positive for IgG and IgM. So both of these results should be, this person should be quarantined or should be isolated by, by, by herself or himself. Why? Because in, in it indicates actually in, in her body, in his body, uh, there are um, um, plenty amounts of the virus. But someday, if you are positively only for IgG, don't worry. You are negative for IgM, for example, but based on rapid test, you are positive for IgG. That's that's a great news for you because you are <laughs> free of virus, but now you, you are bearing up such a, a strong antibody. So the virus itself uh, 
has gone, disappeared, but now only antibody. But sometimes, you know, in our society, they are very scared uh, to be positive with IgG because they say, this is rapid test. I am positive with rapid test. So not... Uh, uh, it, not only uh, showing the very infective variant of person showing the, the, the positivity in rapid test, we just we have to notice whether what kind of the, the Bennett response. I, I would like to show my screen here. Actually, sometime. Okay, let me share my screen first. Uh, I'm on basic here. Please share. Okay. The development of rapid test itself right here. So can you see my slide not yet? Still disappear, right? So it is based on the dynamic of uh, the virus itself. This is the results of uh, on the upper line on the A. Can you see it, Gracia? Yes, sir. It is clear. Oh, yeah. So the rapid test, yeah. if you are negative based on rapid test, it doesn't mean that you are free of virus sometimes because you are, you are in early period of infection. You may negative for IgG or IgM. So the band is blank. There is no band there. It means that you are a uh, lack of IgG and IgM. But it doesn't mean that you are free of such a virus because you just detect the antibody. And another person in and and like uh, uh, after five days of infections they could be positive only for IgM why because yes there is the period of uh, the increase of synthesis of iron globulin M by uh, I mean plasma cells and then the latest one this is also in the situations where they are be positive with IgG and IgM this is also quite dangerous because uh, during this period, the virus is still there in, in the body of such a patient. But later, or even months later, like, uh, I, uh, yeah, several months later after being infected, you could be positive with IgG1. So don't worry. The, vi the, the virus it, itself disappeared, but you now uh, strongest because you you are having such a antibody, specific antibody. And you know, when mm. you are reinfected with such a virus, the same variants, not the mutation form, right? With the same variants of such a virus, then your IgG will directly uh, increase. And and it doesn't have uh, to take, uh, you know, uh, the delay time. So immediately after being reinfected, your iron globulin G will be, uh, it, uh, you know, increase in many times of, of, of expressions of that in your body. So you will be safe for that. This is different with, with this is the COVID test using, uh, you detect not antibody, but you detect the, the virus itself in the blood or in, in mucosal uh, layers and tissue of your body. So we take the samples and then we extract the RNA from from the, the samples in order to extract the the, the material the genetic materials of such a virus and then we will amplify such a isolated DNA uh, RNA and transform it to be this one the complement DNA and then we will detect the amplification the the, the you know copy transcript of cDNA using that machine PCR machines and then we will uh, justify whether this person is infected with a uh, virus or not so it's the precise one okay any other questions from other students <laughs> it's just a question from me please ask if you have a stop it Gracia please share your slide all right sir So based on, on, on this picture, actually, what type of this uh, virus, SARS-CoV-2? Previously, in last week, we have talked about uh, there are two types of the virus, right? Cytopathic and non-cytopathic virus. So what about this, the SARS-CoV-2? Is it cytopathic or uh, non-cytopathic? Mm -hmm. Let's 
the different cytopathic and non-cytopathic virus. Last week we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> you forget it. But based on the picture, <laughs> you get it. The pictures speak it. The pictures directly explain about it. Can you see here? In 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 the in the, in the, the, the upper picture. Probably uh for Hanabi, probably could just get for whether this this is uh this is cytopathic or non cytopathic best best on this picture. SARS CoV two. You forget about your presentations last week. So it's the difference. Uh, cytopathic mean they will induce the damage of the cells, the infected cells. Non-cytopathics, they will never induce the damage of the cells. So it is cytopathic, right? Because the infection itself will also lead to destroying of such the infected cells. Mm. By virus itself, so this is the, 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 the right position, like you see, virus induced cell lysis. So the cells could be directly lysed by the infection of the virus or the, then the cell itself, the infected itself also will undergo the apoptosis that, that uh, you know, sub-generating cell death by its programming cell death. So it is cytopathic virus actually. And what about the cytokine storm? So the very dangerous one actually, it's related with cytokine storm, right? Would you mind to show the cytokine storm? The, the largest figure in a very, yeah, the next slide. No, no, the next slide. Showing the cytokine storm. Yeah, please, next. Next. Yeah, this one, slide number 25, right? So this is the cytokine storm. Some things that is uh, really, really scary with this virus is uh, uh, about the cytokine storm because the cytokine storm will lead to the very severe uh, symptoms of such a virus and it will lead to the, to the death of such a patient, infected patient. So cytokine storm, release you know involves interferons interleukins and many type of interleukins so and also tumor necrosis factors alpha so what is actually uh, the simple one to express about what is cytokine storm itself why the cytokine is dangerous what will be happen if the the tissue the, the immune response uh, excessively produce interferons, gamma, interleukin 1b, interleukin 6, 12, 7, 17, 18, and also tumor necrosis factors alpha. What will happen with, with the organs or of lungs or another organs of the patient? In previous, in previous presentations last week, uh, particularly in, in a paper explaining about the relationship between the obesity and, and uh, insulin resistance related to the uh, immune disorders. So it is, it, is, it is related with the cytokine storm because like a diabetic patient or obese patient or also the cancer patient, patient with cancer also, and also kidney disease patient they also could lead, uh, I mean, could uh, experience such a cytokine storm. But how this could be linked to such a condition? Not many, uh, I mean, this is not the absolute uh, 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 outcome of the infection because the cytokine storms only occurs on, on, on uh, comorbid patients or patients with, uh, with another disease like obesity, patients or, or any kind of metabolic disease and kidney disease or cardiovascular disease. But for the healthy person, there will be no cytokine storm. So it, what is the, the, the main core? I mean, it's something that could uh, explain why, why the cytokine storm is dangerous for, for this patient. 
where, inf where they are infected with SARS-CoV-2. It's related with what? Do you know what is eye interference, interleukins, and tumor necrosis factors alpha? When they are released in existing mounds, what will happen with, with the tissue? In the lung, in the respiratory tract, in, in the cardiovascular organs, also in another like pancreas, also in the liver, kidney, in many kinds of organs, or even in the brain. What will happen when when our tissue or our 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 immune response produces this excessively? Mm -hmm. I think uh, it can lead to inflammation. Yeah, to our that, is, that is this is a pro-inflammatory response. So previously we have talked about the graph showing the balance between uh, anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory response, right? In response to the virus infections. So there are two yes. situations that the, the level of pro-inflammatory and level of anti-inflammatory will be in balance. That's so called it homeostasis state. But in, in such situations, the body will produce the response, the immunity response against the virus, and then it will be controlled by anti-inflammatory. So there will be no the super damage. But in case of cytokine storm, it's it, the, the lab one, the, the lab, I mean, the lab situations uh, in which the pro-inflammatory response is very high, but anti-inflammatory yeah. response is very low, and therefore it's, there is imbalance there. And therefore, it yeah. will induce the, the, the inflammatory, the excessive inflammatory. But in such in other situations that are uh, in other situations that the pro-inflammatory is very low and the but anti-inflammatory is very high, and it it is also uh, will you know put us in 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 such a situation persistent. in, in probable situation yes yeah, this is uh, persistent the virus will be persistent there because there is no pro-inflammatory that will uh, lead to the killing of such a virus the eradication of such a virus it is important so the cytokine storm it is actually the the imbalance of between pro-inflammatory and, and inflammatory anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory so cytokine storm related to the excessive uh, ex expression or, or release of the inflammatory factors that will lead, to, yes, this inflammation is in many organs, in multiple tissue, uh, particularly in the lungs, for example. So if, if the interparent interleukins, uh, 1B, 6, 12, 17, and tumor necrosis factors alpha, as you see previously in obese uh, patients, in obesity, in adipose tissue, this kind of the cytokine will be excessively released right under the obesity before the infections so when such a best patient infected then the level of such a cytokine pro-inflammatory cytokine also will increase in in many times and therefore it will induce the cytokine storm so this, it, it is clearly explained why the obesity patients or the diabetic patients or patients with cardiovascular disease also will uh, you know, experience such a super uh, symptoms of COVID-19 that we could lead the death of such a patient. Because, yeah, you know, that the lung will be uh, implemented and it could be uncontrolled. And, you know, here that uh, the T helper one, CD8 and eosinophils as are the, the, the controller for such a response is now deficient, right? So limponia and eosinophenia this eosinophil will release the anti-inflammatory, but in this case, in 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 super COVID nineteen uh, uh, symptoms, the eosinophils depleted or de decrease, and therefore the anti-inflammatory factors will be also deficient, and it will lead the, the excessive response of that. <clears throat> okay, I think that is my questions. Any other questions before we finish this class? No?
there is a question from Milka or from Janati or from from Nin or from Nadia. There is no Hanafi today. Okay. No, sir. No Hanafi. Yeah. So that's good explained uh, why a person with uh, diabetes and obesity or another comorbid disease like any cancer patients also could uh, undergo the very super uh, symptoms of uh, COVID-19 so as, uh, as compared with the normal persons with that, the, like the, the healthy person with, without the comorbid another disease related to such a disease. <clears throat> mm, I forget, I have another question actually. Angiotensin converting enzymes. And don't forget actually, uh, in diabetic patients, the expressions, or also in, in people with uh, respiratory disease, the expressions of angiotensin converting enzyme 2 is really, really high also in diabetes. So it's mean that the, res the receptors for, for SARS-CoV-2 is also available in, in, in very high amounts in such a body. And also it's, it's, so it's not only because their body developed the, the cytokine itself by their body in excessive amount before the infections, but also the receptor for mediating the infections of SARS-CoV-2 also express it in many, many amounts. Do you know what is the functions of uh, an enzyme of angiotensin converting enzyme 2, EC2, ECE2? Gracia, what is the function of it? It is negative functions or positive functions in our body? Yeah, this, this one. Biologically, what is the function of such enzymes? Because we need it. It, it is expressed. Mm -hmm. It is to to regulate the cytokine. No, sir. No. Actually, <laughs> angiotensin converting enzymes. This enzyme convert the. Do you know that the probably you have learned in biochemistry actually. <laughs> So there is angiotensinogen. So angiotensinogen will could be transform it to be angiotensin uh, two, or angiotensins uh, with a seven subunit or eight subunit. So call it angiotensin two and angiotensins. So uh, the, here is the function of angiotensin two. If the angiotensin organ is okay, let me show you the 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 lead, the graph showing. I mean the pictures. Uh, where is I mean basic probably here. So here's the function actually. Biologically, angiotensin two is really really. I mean angiotensin converting enzyme two is really really necessary for our body. Here. So in our body, in kidney, for example, we have an uh, angiotensinogen. I'm sorry. So there will there is an uh, angiotensinogen with uh, 255 amino acids. And by the renin, so it's kind of also enzyme, the angiotensin angiotensinogen will be converted to be angiotensin 1 with 10 amino acids here. And then here are the functions. The dangers if the angiotensin 1 is converted to be angiotensin 2 by this angiotensin converting enzymes, when this angiotensin 2 bind with angiotensin receptors type 2 or type 1, it could lead to the very severe damage in our cardiovascular systems. Why? It will increase the uh, you know uh, uh, blood pressure because it leads to vasoconstrictions or the, the it's smaller, I mean, the constrictions of our blood vessels and also the enlargement of uh, blood vessels and, and the cardiovascular and the herd and leading to the fibrosis and uh, induce the proliferations and pro inflammations. It would lead to the inflammation and also induce the oxidative stress. So, this is dangerous. But then our body actually also expressed the angiotensin converting enzyme 2. 
So ACE2 is important because this enzyme prevents the development of angiotensin 2 from angiotensin organ. As you hear that, every time angiotensin organ to convert it by renin to be angiotensin 1, it will be converted by AC2 to be angiotensin uh, with this one nine uh, amino acid, and it will be angiotensin with seven amino acid. So it is important. So when when AC1 work to convert it, then before it be uh, excessively bind to the receptors, it will be converted by AC2 also. So, so this is a really important role of AC2 to maintain the cardiovascular health. Because uh, uh, whenever the angiotensin now can convert it to the, be the dangerous form, it will be transported, I mean, converted to be the, the, the safe form, the, the very beneficial form. Here, the angiotensin uh, type with the seven amino acid uh, will bind to its receptors called MEA, MEAS, and it will induce the, uh, the, the, the uh, kind of that pro health uh, functions. The, the will increase the, the beneficial the heart functions of the heart like uh, increase the vasodilation will will decrease the blood pressures and it will protect the vascular from the damage and this is also anti fibrosis anti proliferations and uh, uh, prevent the inflammations and also this is nitric oxide also kind of uh, uh, something that also prevent the, uh, the increase of, of uh, cardiovascular disease rates so it is really important, and it could be, for example, uh, uh, when we block these enzymes in order to prevent the infections of uh, SARS-CoV-2, it could also, uh, you know, lead to this the side effect with cardiovascular disease. So it's kind of the two uh, two opposite uh, directions when you let the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 to be function normally, then it will uh, mediate the virus to infect your cells. But when you block this AC2, these receptors, these enzymes as receptors, it could also promote the, the increase of level angiotensin 2 in your body. And therefore, you will be uh, you will experience such a super effect of a cardiovascular systems you will increase, uh, you, your uh, blood pressure will increase, you will uh, promote the formations of oxidative stress and improve inflammation. So it's kind of that two uh, side, uh, two different aspects that should be considered in developing the, the preventions to the SARS-CoV-2 infections, this one. So recently there are many drugs developed to block only TMPRS as two. So by blocking this uh, this activity, it also could uh, you know because the function to as a priming of the spike virus before it's bind to uh, EC two. So it could be uh, you know minimize the side effect because when we block the EC two, it could lead the damage of our cardiovascular disease. Okay, I think because uh, it's all okay, it's quite longer time. Uh, I think we have finished our discussion today. Thank you for Gracia and the friends that have presented about the papers, expressing uh, and uh, yeah, explaining about uh, the the immunity and aminopathology of SARS-CoV-2 infections in our body. So hopefully that uh, based on our lectures today, you could uh find some beneficial information and, and could get your your understanding on how our body could respond to such a virus that currently that this is really really the viral virus and it's like this is a double viral right it's it's literally a virus and it's literally also become very viral now uh, developing the global pandemic and leading to to many cows in in many aspects of life but economy and social and also in the education systems not only in health thank you very much for your attending today so uh this is the largest time for us to meeting in this class and uh i appreciate for your participations in in all oh, you know, understanding such a paper that I designated before for you. And uh, from the R3 papers, actually, we talk about uh, the how the basic uh, of 
immunity against the virus and how the virus could lead to the infections in our body. And then the second paper is about the uh, explaining about that the metabolic disease like obesity and insulin resistance associated with uh, the, the development of uh, immunopathology. And today we talk about uh, how that uh, SARS-CoV-2 could lead to the severity and how our body, uh, our immune response, uh, uh, you know, it, to be promoted or provoked by the, such infections. Thank you very much. So hopefully that we can make uh, in another time, probably another lecture. I'm not sure in the futures because I, I did not involve in, I don't involve in another kind of the lectures. So thank you, Janati and Hanin and Wilka, Radila and Gracia and also Nadia to Huda. See you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you.